In this video, I will discuss three things. The current status of Osana, how to improve the game's frame rate, and a new mode that I've added to the game. Part 1. Osana Over the past two weeks, a lot of progress has been made on Osana. All of the new dialogue required to add her to the game has been written. That's 185 lines for Osana, 65 lines for Senpai, 24 lines for Yandere-chan, 16 lines for a new male character, 10 lines for a new female character, and 4 lines for Musume Ronshaku. The voice actors for these characters have already recorded all of their lines. I'm not done reviewing all of their work yet, so it's possible that I may need to ask for a few lines to be redone, but the majority of the voice work has definitely been completed. Some of Osana's elimination methods will require new 3D models. Work on those 3D models has begun, but is not yet finished. One of Osana's elimination methods will require a completely new environment. Work on this environment has not yet begun. A new music track is required to add Osana to the game. Work on this track has not yet begun. Numerous new animations will be required as well. Some of them are ready, but the majority of them have yet to be created. Two new characters will make an appearance in Osana's story. I already have the 3D models and voiced lines necessary to add them to the game, but some animation work and programming work still needs to be done. Osana's scripted events will require new programming. Fortunately, these events can reuse most of the programming that was done for Kokona's scripted events. So, a lot of the work has already been done, but more work still remains. If you look at it this way, 47% of the work that needs to be done to add Osana to the game has already been completed. However, this graph might not be completely accurate. For example, a single music track does not have the same level of significance as 20 animations. If everything on this graph was balanced according to how significant it is, the graph might look more like this. It's difficult to attribute a numeric value to things like this, so let's forget about trying to calculate percentage. The important thing is that progress is being made and the assets I need are being delivered at a smooth pace. Part 2. Frame Rate While I'm waiting for the remaining assets to be delivered so that I can begin implementing Osana, I'm trying to improve the game in as many ways as possible. Two weeks ago, I polled the Andere Simulator community and asked what I should prioritize. The majority of people voted for me to implement a higher number of students at the school. However, each time I add a new student to the game, the frame rate drops. I need to fix the problems that cause the game to have a low frame rate before I can add new students to the game. So, basically, a vote for more students was a vote to fix the bad frame rate. Improving the frame rate was also one of the most popular options on the poll, so this was what I chose to focus on next. A game's frame rate depends on the number of operations that your computer must perform on every frame. If your computer has to perform a ridiculous number of operations, or has to perform very complex, time-consuming calculations, then the frame rate will drop. In order to reduce the number of operations that your computer has to perform on every frame, I have added a settings menu where you can disable certain graphical effects. Too many particle effects can take a long time to render, so I've given you the ability to lower the number of particles that will spawn or disable them completely. Adding outlines around character models will double their polygon count. So I've given you the ability to disable outlines. You can also disable anti-aliasing, post-aliasing, bloom, and shadows. In some video games, background characters appear as simple, solid-colored silhouettes instead of detailed, fully textured models. This is all for the sake of giving your computer less work to do to secure a better frame rate. In the settings menu, you now have the ability to decide whether or not students should appear as low detail silhouettes when they are far from the camera. You can also decide how far away from the camera they should be when this effect activates. 
Draw distance is how much of the world the camera will render. If you set the draw distance to 350 meters, you can see across the entire school. If you set the draw distance to 50 meters, you can only see what is 50 meters in front of you. This means that your computer has to render fewer polygons, which improves the frame rate. However, it is very bizarre to see the world come to an end 50 meters in front of you, and it is very jarring to see things pop into existence as soon as they are 50 meters away. To make this more bearable, you can activate fog. Fog will cover up the edge of the world so that you don't have to see the exact point at which the camera stops drawing polygons. Running around Yandere Chan's high school with fog activated and the draw distance set to a low number is pretty spooky. It makes me feel like something scary could pop out of the fog at any moment. It reminds me of an old PlayStation game called Silent Hill. Old consoles, such as the PlayStation 1, could only render a very low number of polygons. The developers of Silent Hill wanted their game to be set in a town but they discovered that the PlayStation was simply not powerful enough to render an entire town. Their solution was to cap the draw distance at a very low number and cover it up with fog. This fog had the side effect of giving the game a very creepy atmosphere. The fog also instilled fear in the player by making them worry about what kind of unseen dangers were lurking nearby in the fog. This helped Silent Hill to become a more effective horror game. In other words, sometimes technical limitations can actually benefit a game. Let me explain how this pertains to Yandere Simulator. Because Yandere-chan is an emotionless, apathetic girl, it makes sense that she wouldn't pay very much attention to her surroundings. She really doesn't care what exists more than 50 meters away from her. So maybe she sees the world as a cold, gray place that is perpetually shrouded in fog. Unless she's near Senpai, whose mere presence allows her to see the world as it truly is, a bright and colorful place. Because Yandere-chan doesn't care about the lives of other people, it makes sense that she would see other people as silhouettes, or as gray, faceless figures, instead of seeing them as individuals with unique appearances. It makes sense that Yandere-chan would only perceive someone as having a unique appearance if that person was noteworthy to her, because that person can be used as a tool. To increase the number of students in Yandere-chan school without harming the frame rate, perhaps the school should be populated with simple silhouettes, or faceless boys and girls, who represent all of the people who serve no purpose to Yandere-chan. Every student in the game is running code that is checking for suspicious behavior, checking for corpses, checking the time of day, checking for special events, and so on. Each time a new student is added to the game, that's yet another student who will be performing checks on every frame of the game. The hypothetical silhouette students, or faceless students, that I am proposing would not be governed by the same code that governs normal students. Silhouette students would use an extremely simple script and would only be capable of a very small range of actions and reactions. This way, they wouldn't require your computer to make dozens of complex calculations on every frame. This is one potential way that I could fill up the school with more students without harming the frame rate. In the coming weeks, I'll make an effort to add new students to the game, as the fans have requested. More students means more polygons, more animations, more pathfinding, more calculations, and so on. It's possible that the act of adding more students will cause the frame rate to take a nosedive. In order to prevent the additional students from ruining your experience, I'll allow the player to decide how many students the game spawns. If you have a weak computer, you should stick to the bare minimum number of students. But if you have a powerful computer, you can try spawning a higher number. Over the past two weeks, I spent a significant amount of time investigating what parts of the game are harming the frame rate, 
researching ways to improve the frame rate, and attempting to implement solutions. I wasn't able to improve the frame rate as much as I wanted to, and the new settings menu doesn't even contain the bare minimum of what a real settings menu should contain, but hopefully it will be of use to people with low-end computers who are trying to achieve a higher frame rate with Yandere Simulator. Part 3. Pose Mode Because Osana will not be functional for an unknown period of time, I decided to add something to the game that would allow people to have fun while waiting for Osana. It's a new mode that allows you to pose the game's characters. To activate this mode, press the question mark key on your keyboard to open up the Easter egg menu, then press the R key. Now, if you walk up to a student, you can pose them by pressing the button displayed above their head. This will open up a menu that lets you perform several actions. If you want to pose the character, you'll have to stop whatever animation they are currently performing. Then, select the Pose option to display a list of body regions. If you want to pose a character's right elbow, you would select Right Arm to display a list of all the bones in their right arm. Then, you can select their elbow. Once a bone has been selected, you can move it around in space, rotate it, or even change the size of the bone. By default, bones will move very slowly. If you want bones to move faster, use the Degree of Change option to make bones move at the speed you would prefer. If you've done something absolutely horrible, use the Reset option to return the bone back to the way it was before you entered the menu. In addition to posing bones, you can also move a character anywhere you wish. Select Reposition and you will see a marker appear on the ground in front of Yandere-chan. You can use this marker to move a character anywhere you'd like them to be. You can also customize the appearance of a character. You can choose their hairstyle, choose their accessory, and even choose their clothing. You can also change the color of their hair. The last feature of Pose Mode is the ability to make a character perform any animation you choose. Currently, girls have 153 animations, and boys have 86 animations. With such a long list of animations, it can be quite a hassle to locate the animation you're looking for. It would be very convenient if animations were divided into categories. For example, a category for social animations, a category for attack animations, etc. But for now, it's all just one giant list. This is the first version of Pose Mode, so it's not complete yet. For example, there is currently no way to choose what stockings a girl is wearing. I'd like to add that feature, but first I want to revise the script that dictates a student's appearance to make it easier for me to change a student's textures and clothing. There are some bugs in this mode. For example, putting Musume's hairstyle onto a girl will also apply Musume's tan, but only on the character's face. I'll fix these kinds of problems in a future update. It's also possible that I will add more features to pose mode in future updates as well. Even if there are a couple of bugs, I still hope that you enjoy messing around with Pose Mode while waiting for Osana. Pose Mode was inspired by a mod created by... a gentleman whose username I have difficulty pronouncing. He has also created a mod that allows people to design their own cutscenes. There are people who have already begun to use the mod in very creative ways. After seeing the potential of this mod, I am considering the idea of adding it to the game as an official feature, similarly to how Pose Mode was added as an official feature. However, adding a Cutscene Director Mode would be substantially more difficult and time-consuming than adding a Pose Mode, so I can't guarantee that I will add it in the near future. Over the next two weeks, I will continue to work together with various volunteers until I have everything I need to add Osana to the game. And while I'm waiting for those assets to be delivered, I will focus my attention on the things that the community has voted for. 
thank you for following the development of Yandere Simulator. <laughs>